let's say you're flying in a commercial airplane, for whatever reason, the plane breaks apart. Well, you have three minutes before you hit the ground. So you might be wondering, should I just jump off the wreckage and fall solo or should you just hang on to the wreckage? Well, you have a higher chance of survival if you remain in the wreckage or even hold on to your seat if you can. not But that's only if the debris has a larger surface area than you. Because in that case, you're going to increase the air drag and that'll slow down your fall. But let's say you get sucked out of the plane. You're free falling solo. Well, you're going to reach terminal velocity in about 13 or 14 seconds. If you're in a nosedive position, you can reach up to 270 miles an hour. That's like the speed of a Japanese high-speed train or a, I don't know, hypercar like a Bugatti Chiron, right? You want to slow down your speed. And to do that, you reposition yourself. Basically, point your hips towards the ground, arch your back and head forward, spread out your limbs evenly with your elbows and knees bent at 45 degrees. And that way you could cut down your speed to a neutral state of 124 miles. At least it gives you a few more seconds to think. Most people think you should aim for water, but actually that's the worst choice to make. Because the thing is, water doesn't compress easily. So if you're falling 124 miles an hour, you'd be like hitting concrete. So a better landing spot, if you have the option, try to aim for snow or swampland or trees, because those surfaces will help you to decelerate. But let's say you can't find any of those. Well, the next best option is to aim for a rooftop or a bus because those objects are not strong and they could help absorb some of your impact energy. Also, the position in which you land, that matters. You have a higher chance of survival if you land feet first. The reason is your feet and legs will absorb most of the impact. They'll shatter, of course, but it'll protect the more important parts of your body. If commercial airlines did give you parachutes, you think it would help, but actually it wouldn't. Because the thing is, airlines typically cruise like 550 or 600 miles an hour. So if you jumped out at that speed, you're gonna smash into the side of the plane, most likely. But let's say even if you could jump out safely, well, commercial airplanes, they're still cruising minimally at 35,000 feet. We're talking like 6.6 .6 miles above the ground. And at that altitude, the oxygen level is so thin, you're going to just pass out the first minute. You're also going to get frostbite, if not thermal shock, because a temperature that high could reach negative 65 degrees Fahrenheit or worse. And let's say even if those initial dangers aren't even an issue, the reality is that most airline accidents happen during takeoff or during landing. And that's just not enough time or altitude for you to make your decision, wait for other passengers to jump, and then figure out how to even use a parachute. And that's why commercial airplanes don't bother providing parachutes. 